bad student. Oh. I didn't have a good GPA. Okay. Um, what was your GPA? It was a 2.6. What? <laughs> so I interviewed with Meta, Google, Reddit, Amazon, wow. Microsoft. And out of all these companies, I got rejected 10 times. For those of you that have stuck around for a while, I've also made videos in the past about my journey into Microsoft as a bad student. I went from having a 2.6 GPA to landing a software engineering job at Microsoft. This is Microsoft. In short, my story is already out there, but what if I told you that you didn't have the full story yet? The details of my rejections. Don't freaking blame other people. Me almost wanting to quit. But the first OTS for you didn't go well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember going back to the scores, being a little disappointed looking at it. I'm like, huh, I wonder what happened here. And how failing over and over again was actually the key to my success. You'll even hear from the recruiter that hired me and the hiring manager that interviewed me at Microsoft. I'm finally ready to give you the unfiltered truth about how I got into this position today. So let's get into it. Okay, so first I want to give a little backstory for the people that don't know my journey. As a recap, I was not a great student. I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison and graduated in computer science with a 2.6 GPA. Yeah, it was that bad. Later, I got a job at a startup working completely remotely in Greece. This is probably one of the best times of my life, but I didn't really learn that much on the job. I eventually got a software engineering job at Target. From there, I spent two and a half years learning a lot. From using Kotlin and Java, the Bikernaut framework, in-house CICD processes, the ins and outs of testing applications, as well as leading an entire project end-to-end. -end. So implementation org.spring framework.boot, um, and the, you want the Spring Boot starter web. It gave me a huge leg up in the industry, and I made some really great friends too. Towards the end of my time there, I got promoted to senior engineer, which made me start to consider other offers that were on the table. Target was great, I loved it. How people work and function together as teams and like the values that they have. I do really enjoy like Target as a company. But I also couldn't help but wonder what it'd feel like to aim a bit higher and challenge myself even more. In 2021, I started to look for a new job. At this time, I was getting several messages from recruiters at Amazon, Meta, Google, Reddit, and one of those recruiters was Jeff from Microsoft. We'll hear a little more from Jeff later about how my interviews went. I don't, I don't remember what score you got, but I think there was basically, it was maybe a three question thing. Uh, and I think you got one of them entirely wrong. I started to get a few first round interviews at places like Amazon, Meta, and my very first interview at Microsoft. I won't focus too much on my other interviews. You can actually watch one of these videos if you wanna see more of my experience with other companies. But my very first interview at Microsoft was nerve wracking. It was an online assessment. So I'd have an hour to complete a few coding challenges online and then submit my form. There'd be no interaction with any hiring managers just yet. At this time, I'd just started to do some easy problems on leak code and maybe a few medium ones as well. I'd even read that the online assessments were pretty easy. So I didn't think that it'd be a huge deal, but I was wrong. But the first OTS for you didn't go well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember going back to the scores, being a little disappointed looking at it. I'm like, huh, I wonder what happened here. And I kind of, I kind of dug through to see like, okay, where did she go wrong? What, but, but again, because I don't, I don't know Codility or Leak Code or that kind of stuff. So reading all that is my understanding is is kind of limited. I don't, I don't remember what score you got, but I think there was basically it was maybe a three question thing, uh, and I think you got one of them entirely wrong, okay. and and one of them, a good portion of it was wrong. The questions weren't all that hard like Redditor opposite Ostrich 905 indicated. I remember doing something similar, a debugging portion and two leak code, easier medium problems. There was also some multiple choice in there too. You had some test cases that you had to run and then also some hidden test cases that they wouldn't show you. I ran everything so that all the visible test cases passed and thought, okay, I'm good, everything works. And then I submitted my code with 30 minutes to spare, thinking that speed would help me in this case. And that's where I made my second mistake. I got an email the next day saying the following. Hi Pooja, we've enjoyed getting to know you and appreciate your interest in your career at Microsoft. Unfortunately, we will not be moving forward with your candidacy for the position of software engineer at this time. I was devastated, but it made total sense. I had failed a significant portion of the OTS, so they couldn't put me through to the next round. I set up a call like, hey, just to let you know, OTS didn't go well. And you told me like, 
these things are not my thing. Like mm -hmm. these, you know, timed assessments are just not, you know, something that I'm that I'm very good at. And so it's like, okay, we had a policy at the time that you had to wait 30 days before you could take another OTS. And, you know, as much as you can, memorize what you can, and spend all these hours and and we'll give it another shot in 30 days. Let's do that. So the recruiter said that I could try again in a few months, but that I need to study up before the next round. Throughout the next few months, I continued to have more interviews with different companies. I had an interview at Google, Meta, Reddit, LinkedIn, and Amazon. I got to the final rounds for Amazon, Meta, and LinkedIn, but I pretty much failed right away when interviewing at Google and Reddit. The more I interviewed, the quicker I realized that interviewers don't really care about knowing the right answer. In fact, they didn't really care at all. What they did care about was how you got to an answer and how well you collaborated with the interviewer. Yes you have the technical skills required. Past that is the other, at least half of what we're looking for. We are looking for growth mindset. We are looking for demonstrations of Microsoft values, customer obsessed, growth mindset, heavy collaboration with other people. This brings me to interview number two with Microsoft. After a few months, the recruiter and I started chatting again, discussing the next interview date. We set one up and I received the online assessment again. This time I was prepared to test all possible cases for the coding module. I whizzed through the debugging and multiple choice sections and then went on to the coding and testing portion. I really took my time to make sure that not only all the visible test cases passed, but also that I was writing down any edge cases that I missed for the hidden test cases. And I tested for those as well. I took almost the entire hour to double and triple check everything. The code looked great and I was pretty confident that I had passed this time. So I submitted the assessment and then waited until the next day where I received a new email from Microsoft. And this time I was rejected again. In my rush to make sure that I'd fixed all my mistakes from last time, I'd neglected the easier part of the online assessment, and I didn't really double check my work there. I was pretty upset. The online assessment was supposed to be the easy part, not the hard one, but I was struggling to get past it. At this point, I'd been studying for several hours a day, grinding leak code, watching YouTube advice videos online, and even going through the Cracking the Code interviewing book again. But it didn't even feel like I really had a fighting chance if I wasn't even getting past the online assessment at Microsoft. So I chatted with my parents and my boyfriend. They all said that I'd given it a valiant effort. But I was happy working at Target, so they weren't quite sure why I was trying so hard to pursue this big tech dream. And honestly, I wasn't really sure why I was doing it either. During this time, I'd also found out that I'd gotten rejected from Amazon again. And this was after going through the final round interviews for questions that I, I thought I knew the answers to. And I also got rejected from LinkedIn after the final round. So at this point, I had gone through several final round interviews and I had gotten rejected. Everything seemed to be crumbling before me despite putting hours and hours of practice outside my job. So now I had a choice. Either I give up and stay content at the job that I'm currently working, or I keep trying with no guarantee of success and no guarantee that my hours and hours of time spent studying doesn't actually go to waste. As I was about to throw in the towel, I remembered something that my math teacher once told me when I had failed a test. I had studied for days and days and I still ended up getting a C. It devastated me. But at the time, my teacher knew that it was just a roadblock. It wasn't a finality. He came to me and said, success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. He was a big Winston Churchill fan, but that's all. It suddenly made sense to me. Success doesn't mean perfection. It doesn't mean being the smartest person, the most experienced, or even the most confident. It means learning in the face of failure and just keeping on going, no matter what. Didn't get through, but the score was much higher. And you were really good about it. Like when we had the conversation, like, yeah, you know, I might have screwed this up or but you, we took everything very constructively and you know, kept good spirits about the whole thing. It really started to humanize the experience for me. So that night I decided I would try again. I emailed the recruiter and I told him, I don't care how long it takes, but I will keep trying. I will continue interviewing until I receive an offer letter. Shortly after I got a message from him saying, let's do this. Hey guys, so thanks for watching part one of my software engineering journey to Microsoft. Part two will be coming out soon. You'll find out exactly how I got into the company, the negotiation process, and you'll even hear from other Microsoft employees. So stay tuned.